Welcome to There is a Method to the Madness. My name is Rob Maxwell and I'm an exercise physiologist and personal trainer. I'm the owner of Maxwell's Fitness Programs and I've been in business since 1994. Today is Friday, February 24th. Man, oh man, this year is flying by. And today I'm going to cover lat pulldowns, pull-ups, and otherwise known as high pulls. The other day, as you may remember, or maybe you didn't listen, I will tell you that I covered the chest press and bench press, so I'm going to talk about some of these major movements so we can better understand them over the next few episodes. Today's podcast is brought to you by Jonathan and Lynn Gilden of the Gilden Group at Realty Pros. They are simply the best, if you remember that 80s song, and they really, really are. I personally vouch for them. If you're looking to sell your home or buy something new, give them a shout, and that will be easy to do because I will put all of their contact information in today's show notes. Please subscribe to this podcast so it automatically downloads, and please rate the show. I saw I only had 21 reviews. It's very simple to just go in and give it five stars. It helps me on Spotify and through Apple Podcasts. It helps me with the logarithms, so the more people we have listening and subscribing, the more Spotify realizes people are listening. So, Do me a little favor. Very simple. All right. Thank you. All right. So now let's talk about the high pull. All right. So as I said, most human movement and need for strength exercise comes from some really basic movements. The squat, which is bending down and standing up. The hinge, which essentially is bending forward a lunge, one leg coming out in front of the other, a major push out in front of you, which we call a horizontal push, a press, which we press overhead, a horizontal and vertical pull, which means we're pulling towards us. All right. So essentially we can shorten that even more and say lower body pushing lower body pulling, which is the hinge, upper body pushing and pressing, and upper body pulling towards us, either vertically or horizontally. That's pretty much what our body does. And then all of the 10 major muscle groups simply pull out a portion of those tasks, okay? If we understand that, we'll really know how to strengthen our body because ultimately we need to strengthen our body in those particular motions. Then we can do more of what we want to do, whether it be simply look better because we have nice aesthetic looking muscles, which there is nothing wrong with that, or move better so we have better activities of daily living right? Because everybody wants to have a good quality of life, I can imagine. And strengthening those movements will greatly help us do that. As a matter of fact, I can't think of a better way to improve that than strengthening those movements. All right. So let's talk about the pull. All right. So we can pull in various ways. And if you remember the other day, if you listened, if not, go back and check it out. I talked about the pros and cons of all the different pushing types of things you can do. And ultimately what I said was there really isn't a best and it comes down to what you have and what you like and also variety, doing a different, doing different versions of it. The same is true for pulling. All right. So pulling can be as difficult as doing a pull-up, which again, as I mentioned the other day, a lot of people think body weight exercises are the easiest. Well, 
I can assure you it is quite the opposite. Body weight exercises are ultimately the hardest. And if you need any further illustration than the pull-up, then you're simply not going to understand it because the pull-up is ultimately the greatest way for us to understand this, all right? We all know how hard it is to pull our body up from the ground, right? Pull-ups are hard. Majority of people cannot do pull-ups. Majority of women totally can't do pull-ups. And most men say over the age of 30 can't do a single pull-up. Now, not saying it can't happen. Of course it can happen. And I think it's a great goal for everybody to try to do. Now, before you get your panties in a wad and get all mad at me for like saying something that sounds politically incorrect about men and women, that is flat out not what I'm talking about. That is not the truth. It's a physiological fact that women are 50% less strong in the upper body than men. That is a fact. They are 30% less strong in their lower body than men. So essentially that means that their strength to weight ratio compared to men is better in their lower body than in their upper body. All right. That's simply due to muscle mass. It has nothing to do with being sexist or anything like that. Men have a lot more pectoralis major muscles in their upper chest cavity than women for obvious reasons. Women tend to have more hip strength for childbearing is just a physiological fact. And so their lower body is going to be closer to what a man's lower body is, but their upper body isn't going to be quite the same. So it is simply harder for women, especially in the upper body, to have the strength of a man because of simply having less muscle mass. That's all there is to it. So when a woman is able to do a pull-up or two or three, it's an extraordinary feat. And I actually have a client who can do 11 or so. I think she may have done even more than that, which is a freak in nature. I mean, it is absolutely incredible. I think it's incredible really for anybody to be able to do one pull-up. All right. It really is. It's a great feat of strength. Having said that, that means that the pull-up is one of the hardest exercises we can do. So clearly body weight exercises are hard. Let's say you can't do a pull-up, all right? So what else can the pulling muscles do? A lot of things. So the pulling muscles essentially are your latissimus dorsi and your rhomboids. Those are your major upper back muscles, all right? The latissimus dorsi is responsible for what we call Shoulder extension, that means bringing your arms from upper position to down in front of you. And they're also responsible for shoulder adduction. That means bringing your upper arms from above you to your side from the side. All right. So if you're imagining your arms are straight, locked out, up over your head, and you pull them downward with weight, that is shoulder extension. Now, if you can imagine your arms are upward overhead and you're pulling them downward with weight, and obviously you would need cables to do that or, or gravity would simply take it down, that is shoulder adduction, all right? So now imagine a pull-up. Your arms are up above you and now you are pulling your torso towards the bar. That is shoulder extension. If your hands are pronated or overhand grip in front of you, or it is shoulder adduction if your arms are very wide out to the side. In any event, it's the same thing, meaning that you are pulling your body vertically and your lats are doing the work. The other thing the, the upper back does, the rhomboids does what is called shoulder extension and scapular retraction. I know this all sounds kind of like technical, but don't tune me out. It's just important to understand that our muscles do a specific task. Okay. Hence the method to the madness. So scapular retraction means that your shoulder blades are coming together. So think about your 
upper back pulling backward and you can see those shoulder blades coming together and if it's a nice toned physique you can actually see those beautiful rhomboids doing the work and contracting together i'm a little biased i think the back is so amazing and great it's one of my favorite muscle groups it looks like simply an art of beauty when you see somebody you know that's very well defined in large muscles and they're doing these movements and you can see the synchronicity of all these different muscle groups coming together and working together and it is such a beautiful thing to see you know it's like wow man god really knew what he was doing he made this beautiful body work in synchronicity and seeing these muscles work together is so cool so you can see that so we always lump the lats and the rhomboids together because they're hard to separate they go together they're two peas in a pod so when you are pulling vertically which is over your head downward or pulling your body up or you're pulling horizontally meaning you are pulling towards you like a row you're really using both your lats and your rhomboids all right so those are the joint actions for your upper back muscles now let's talk about these exercises so again pull-ups are hard what about pull downs so pull down is the machine version of a pull-up it's great I mean, most people, even super strong people that can do pull-ups do pull-downs because it's hard a lot of times to do a lot of reps with pull-ups, especially after you get tired. So even experienced big hardcore bodybuilders will be doing pull-downs so they can do more reps. Sometimes they do both. Now let's say you can't do pull-ups yet. Pull-downs is a great way to work towards doing pull-ups and don't get discouraged if you say, I'm never gonna do a pull-up again. That is okay. You're working your lats by doing a pull down and it is such an essentially important exercise. Whatever grip you choose, there's always the minutia of people arguing about that stuff. It's really what works best for you and use a variety. You can use a close grip or you can use a wide grip. Sure, there's a little bit of changes as far as how much lat is involved. So. The wider you go, the more lat, less rhomboid. The narrower you go, the more rhomboid, less lat. Who cares? Use the one that's available. Use the one you like. Use a variety. Everybody's a little bit different. But the pull down is a great exercise to work your pulling muscles. Now, rows are the horizontal plane, meaning that is you're working more horizontally, you're pulling inward instead of pulling upward or downward. So a row can be as challenging as say a bent over row with a barbell, and that is where your spine is hinged forward, bent down roughly at 90 degrees, and you're pulling a barbell or dumbbells to your chest or your um, pet cavity area. All right, doesn't necessarily have to go all the way to the chest. That is a barbell or dumbbell row. Or we can sit on a cable machine and do what we call low rows on the low pulley. Or we can use a multi-purpose cable machine and stand and pull inward. That is what we call an horizontal row. So a lot of times to effectively work your back, you're going to want to do both horizontal style rows, whether it be dumbbell rows, barbell rows, cable rows, seated rows, really does not matter. And then an also a version of a vertical pull, such as pull downs or pull ups. Now, a lot of times when time is an issue and somebody doesn't necessarily have time to include all that, then what we always recommend is you do one pull per workout and then the next time you work out do the other one so in other words you can do like vertical pulls one day and then we can do like say horizontal pulls the next time somebody works out again you know arguing over just how much is really really kind of silly the important part is understanding what our muscles do and then we can always include the particular exercises into the routine. All right. So one of the workout programs we do here 
And a lot of this has been designed and refined over the years of being in business for, you know, almost 30 years, you know, having a gym, which is pretty cool and amazing to say, actually. I've come up with like about four different workout plans I like to use. And a lot of it has to do with timing, you know, how long the person has to work out. I mean, everybody has a budget. Somebody can't work out with you for 90 minutes, five times a week. That's pretty expensive. And plus, you know, that's really not necessary at all. So in other words, a lot of the workouts have been built around how much time people have and what's going to get people the most bang for their buck, literally, and what's the most important way to make it flow. So we've come up with like four. We have a standard, then we have, and I bring this up because I'm going to talk about this one a little bit, what we call the John. And it's kind of funny because we literally named it after one of our clients named John because it was such an effective workout for him. And then we just um, started using it for other people because it put things together in such a great way. And what we did was we went with a leg push, all right, and I'll get into the legs next week, but a leg push, whether it be a squat or say a leg press, and then we did a upper body push for the second exercise, and then we did an upper body pull, all right, that was the first round, and we did three sets of that, so three circuits, and then we took like a little break in between, an active break, and did some stomach exercise of sorts or two blocks or something like that just to kind of break it up and then we did our second round and we would do a lower body pull like a hinge and then we would do an upper body press instead of a push so instead of pushing outward we're pressing upward and then we would do a pull of sorts and again if the first time around we did vertical pull then the second time we do horizontal pull and lo and behold, we hit his whole body and it just worked so well. And we were incorporating both presses and pushes. And remember, just to get a little technical, pushes is horizontal push outward, press is pressing upward with a vertical pull, and that is a pull down or pull up, and a horizontal pull, and that is a row of sorts. So we got everything involved, like in six exercises, and we called it the John. So now it's kind of become one of our main four exercise programs that we use. All right. So now what's the best? Again, what's the best for you? I go through different kicks on things. You know, there was a while there I was doing like nothing but pull-ups for my pulls. And then I realized, you know, this is getting a little boring. And then I started incorporating more pull downs and rows. Lately, I've been really loving the seated row on my Nautilus seated row machine. I just love how I can really get engaged and externally rotate my elbows and really squeeze my lats and feel them. And I feel like maybe the, the rowing was suffering a little bit in my program because I was doing so many vertical pulls. So they're all great. The key is what can you use? What do you have to use? So... I have a friend of mine that I work with and she is uh, working with Pure Health and uh, it's an amazing um, program that she has in Pennsylvania and we collaborate on some things and one of the things I help her with is her strength training and I know that she's got a couple, she's got so many things in the fire right now that it's hard for her to um, get her workouts in, but she knows they're super important. So when she visited and did a workshop with us a month or so ago, or maybe a little bit less, actually, I showed her a quick routine. She could do at home to get it in. And I said, you know, dumbbells are great. And so we did dumbbell rows, which is a horizontal pull, which is a great way to work your lats and rhomboids. And you don't need a lot of equipment. So a dumbbell row can do it. If you have access to a gym like mine, a personal training studio, or uh, even a bigger gym, there's going to be all kinds of equipment in there. Like for us here, we have a hammer high pole. So that is basically a in-between row and pull down. Then we have my Nautilus seated row, which I already stated. Then we have barbells with weights, of course. And then we have dumbbells up to 50s. And then I have a cable 
machine, a multi-cable machine where I can do rows and things like that. So there's all this variety for that for us to use. And that's great. That, that's, that's cool. That, that's a perk. But we don't always need that. All right. And again, we just need variety sometimes. The key is what you feel, what you have, and what, do, what does not exasperate any particular injuries. Let's say if you've had a lower back injury in the past and you're worried about it, a bent over row may not be the way to work your upper back because you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position. You might be better off using a seated row or a high row with a pad on your chest so you don't have to hurt your back at all. So again, you know, there's different reasons to do things. Um, and really, you know, it's about working that back. And again, I'm biased. I love working the back. It's so great to have a nice strong back, right? It makes us feel good too. And it's so great for our posture. It's absolutely so great for our posture to have a strong back. All right. So that's a lot, lot of fun. Next week, I'm going to be covering the other movements of, I'm going to do squat again, even though I've done it before. It's so critical. And then the hinge and then some of what we call accessory exercises. All right. So speaking of keeping that back nice and strong, don't forget to check out our sponsor, chiropractic physician, Dr. Doris Antos. She's phenomenal and she, along with strength training, will help keep your back and the rest of your body in alignment and strong. She is on Granada Boulevard in Ormond Beach and she recently hired a new assistant. So she's taking new patients and just like the Gildans, I will put her information in the show notes. Until next time, be max fit and be max fit.